Amanda, welcome to the Daily Social Distancing Show. Thank you so much for having me. Um, it is really great to have you on the show now. Um, unfortunately, for a, a topic that is oftentimes overlooked and more especially overlooked during the coronavirus pandemic, and that is the issue of sexual assault and, and abuse that is taking place um, in many people's homes and just in the places where they're staying. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing right now with, with your Survivor program. Absolutely. Um, Trevor, this pandemic has been unprecedented in many ways, but in one way, it's been tragically predictable. Just like you said, the spread of COVID-19 is being trailed by a spike of sexual violence. Um, a lot of people are feeling isolated right now. I think that's what a large part of the world feels. And so you can only imagine what survivors are feeling at this moment. And so that's why my team and I started a program. Last week, we rolled it out. It's called Survivor Safe Haven. It's a growing partnership with chefs, restaurants, grocery stores, basically places where people are still going to in the outside world. And these safe havens have posted flyers with a code word. It's Rise Up 19. And if someone mentions Rise Up 19, what they will know is that that staffer at that place has been trained to call hotline and to give them a safe place to take that phone call. And we've uh, spread this in DC, New York, LA, SF, but we're trying to raise awareness um, to get this to as many survivors as possible. The first goal um, is to raise awareness, uh, to get access to information and resources for survivors. The second goal, which is just as important, is to let survivors know that they're not alone. It, it really is a, um, a paradox right now because for most of the world, the idea is stay at home so that you can be safe. For many survivors and people who are experiencing sexual assault or abuse, this is now almost the complete opposite. Staying at home is now staying in the place where there is the sexual assault or abuse. How do you try to help these people? Is there a way to get them out of these environments? Is there a way to get help into these environments? Because oftentimes, people don't have the luxury of leaving because they're tied to the space that is also tied to their abuse. Absolutely. And what we're trying to do is let people know that there are places that one will give them help either virtually or let them know that they have rights still. Um, so on our website, risenow.us slash COVID, there's a list of rights that are afforded to survivors. Even in these times, which can be, again, unpredictable, um, we still have rights. And it's really important for people to know that. By giving people a number and by giving them support, some would say, I mean, Amanda, what does this do for, for these people who are in these predicaments? But there, there has been clear research that has shown that having a way out or having someone to talk to makes a big difference. Tell us a little bit about why that aspect of support is so important. Um, there's this psychologist, uh, uh, Adam Grant, who has done a study called The Button. He wrote about it, Sheryl Sandberg wrote about it, and it's about an experiment. Um, in this experiment, researchers gave participants a very difficult task to do while stressing them out. It was a loud music playing intermittently. Um, and for some participants, they gave them a button. This button, should they choose to use it, would shut off um, the music. And those who had the button were calmer, performed better. But the kicker is that actually none of the participants pressed the button. And the conclusion of the study was that people just knowing that there was an option for them, that they had agency, did better. And this program, Survivor Safe Haven, is meant to be an, a button of sorts. It's meant to tell survivors that we are here for you, the community is there for you, and you are not alone. The community is, 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 is one aspect of giving people support, but as we've learned all too often, unfortunately, unless there is some governmental support or structures in place, uh, you know, stamping out abuse, whether it be sexual or physical, is, is, a, is a tall task. Is there any support coming in from the federal government during this time, from state government, um, to try and assist um, these people, especially women, who are being affected by sexual assault and abuse? Actually, Trevor, that's one of the main things that we at RISE are trying to do right now. We've been talking with governors, with attorney generals, local leaders, and even trying to talk to the White House as well. Um, options like just recognizing that this is an issue all the way to holding executive orders um, to help survivors with civil rights right now. 
Well, thank you so much for that. If, if anybody wants to help with this cause, if, if somebody wants to participate in the program, if somebody wants to help the organization as a whole, what can they do? Anyone can help right now. If you're a grocery store owner, a restaurant, or even someone uh, who wants to be an ally, you can go to risenow.us slash COVID, download the flyers and share them. Simple as that. Amanda, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank um, you. Hopefully this won't be going on for too long and we'll see you on the other side. Thank you so much, Trevor.